This lecture is part of a Udemy course entitled Design of Wastewater Treatment Plants for On-Site Projects. You will learn how to fully design a treatment plant for small to medium scale projects. You can find an 80% discount promo link in the description box. Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture that will be about the vertical flow constructed wetlands. Let's start by uh, a quick overview about uh, this wastewater treatment process, which is a nature-based solution to treat the wastewater. The components of a vertical flow constructed wetland are very simple. It consists of an excavated a basin filled with some media that are usually sand and gravel. So we have a, a bottom layer of gravel, then sand, then a top layer uh, of gravel. We have also reeds, so these plants that will help in the uh, treatment of the wastewater. And of course, the uh, distribution pipes and the drainage pipes. So the wastewater is pumped into this basin through these distribution pipes and they flow vertically. So this is why we call it a vertical flow constructed wetland because the flow will go through this treatment media vertically. So it will go down, unlike the horizontal flow constructed wetland that is usually flowing horizontally. So we have here a vertical flow of the wastewater that will be treated through this media and uh, by the rhizomes of the reeds and then the treated water will be collected through these uh, drainage pipes and then the wastewater can be safely disposed if it met the local regulations or it can be further treated through a tertiary treatment for this infection like a UV treatment or chlorination. Now let's see what are the components of a vertical flow wetland. First of all, we have to excavate a basin. So let's say that this is our basin that has a bottom sloped. So the bottom is sloped to enable the wastewater drainage by gravity. Then we have to include a, an impermeable lining material. So we have to add a lining material all across the wetland. So let's say that this is the soil level. So we have to add this lining material to prevent any wastewater leakage into the groundwater and avoid any source of pollution because this wastewater is still untreated. Then we can add the filtering media that consists of two thin layers of gravel. So we have a thin layer of gravel at the top and another one at the bottom. And the main treatment media is between these two gravel layers and it consists of sand. So we have a sand layer between those two gravel layers. Then we can plant the wetland reeds. So we have the reeds and their rhizomes that will help in the wastewater treatment. Unlike the horizontal flow wetland, if you remember the wastewater enters by gravity and the vertical flow wetland, we have to pump the wastewater. So we have to include an influent pump. So we have to add a chamber, a pumping chamber, let's say before uh, this wetland and it has a pump. I will remove uh, these reeds for now. The wastewater is pumped into the wetland intermittently for around four to 10 times a day. We have this major uh, pipe distribution pipe and we have other that will distribute the wastewater equally into this wetland. The wastewater is distributed equally through these branched 
uh, pipes and at the bottom of these pipes we have some plates we call them splashing plates what is the importance of these plates they have two roles first of all to distribute equally and uniformly the wastewater and second of all and most importantly it is to oxygenate this wastewater because as you know when water percolates into a plate we will see some air bubbles this means that this water is being oxygenated and we are creating aerobic conditions that are very important for the treatment process we will see later on in details the importance of uh, this oxygenation the wastewater will then flow vertically into uh, the treatment media and then it can leave through a perforated pipe it can leave by gravity and always beside uh, any wetland we have the water level control structure that is placed just beside it to control the water level of the wetland we have already covered uh, this device in details in the horizontal flow wetland lecture a constructed wetland is usually used as a secondary treatment so we have to include in our treatment scheme a pretreatment as well as a primary treatment the pretreatment can simply consist of a coarse screen to retain coarse material so they don't damage our treatment system then the primary treatment can consist of a septic tank or an anaerobic baffled reactor abr or any advanced uh, sedimentation tank to highly reduce the tss or what we call total suspended solids and the fog fat oil and grease if our wastewater contain high fog we might include or consider the use of a grease trap if we fail to lower these two components our wetland might clog and this will cause the failure of the wetland which is a major problem then comes the uh, vertical flow constructed wetland which consists of an excavated basin filled of a media this basin has an impermeable lining to prevent the infiltration of the wastewater it has also two types of filtering media that are the sand as well as the gravel we have the reeds and the wastewater that is being pumped through a pumping shaft four to ten times a day and this water will flow vertically into the filtering media besides we have the water level control then the water can be safely disposed or further treated now how does a wetland work and how is the wastewater treated in fact the roots the roots of the reeds as well as the gravel will form a certain type of media that will be an ideal place for the growth of a good bacteria and this bacteria will between a parenthesis they will eat the pollutants and the organic matters within the wastewater we will have attached as well as suspended microbial growth that will highly reduce the organic compounds through anaerobic and aerobic processes to create aerobic conditions we have to inject oxygen and this oxygen is supplied by first of all the splashing plates as we have already said and as well as the rhizomes that will diffuse oxygen within the media now let's see the advantages of a vertical flow constructed wetland first of all it is nature based so we don't really have a major structural components nor mechanical equipment we have also high reduction of bod suspended solids and pathogens compared to a, a horizontal flow wetland it requires less space compared also to a horizontal flow wetland it has the ability to nitrify or to uh, reduce the uh, total nitrogen due to the good oxygen transfer due to the aerobic conditions also we have no unpleasant sounds and smells less clogging than the horizontal flow wetland and also it requires 
minimal maintenance so only some gardening works now for the disadvantages first of all it requires expert design and construction it is a little bit more complicated uh, than a horizontal flow wetland it also requires a constant source of electrical energy uh, for pumps also, it has a higher operation costs uh, compared to the horizontal flow wetland since we have electrical components, so we need energy and also we need a constant maintenance for the pumps. Now, let's see what is the effluent quality of a wastewater treatment plant involving a primary treatment that can be a septic tank or ABR and a vertical flow wetland. So a well-designed and maintained system will generate a high quality effluent. We have 80 to 90% BOD removal, which is a, a very good rate. 90% of TSS removal, and this is mainly due to the primary treatment. 10 to 35% of phosphorus removal, 30 to 40% of total nitrogen removal and also high reduction of E. coli that can be reduced by 99%. Now we have to always stress about the importance of the primary treatment because wetlands can be easily clogged and when the wetland clogs we have the problem of flooding which is a major very major problem so we have to highly reduce the suspended solids and the FOG during the primary treatment so an ABR is highly recommended along with a grease trap if we have high levels of FOG now let's see what are the designing parameters for a vertical flow wetland in this lecture we will only cover the rule of thumb theory so to design a wetland you have to take into consideration three square meter of area per person or per capita so for example a wetland that treats the wastewater generated by 10 persons will have an area of 30 square meter take a lens to width ratio between 1 to 2 so preferably take it as 1.5 the minimum length of the wetland is 6 meters for the media use a gravel and washed sand so this is a washed sand and the media must be placed as follows first of all we have a 5 centimeters layer of gravel the gravel must have a diameter of 5 to 10 millimeters so 5 centimeters then a layer of sand that has a size of 1 to 4 millimeters so 45 centimeters of sand then another layer of a gravel 5 centimeters also of 5 to 10 millimeters gravel finally 15 centimeters of coarse gravel that has a size between 20 to 40 uh, millimeters and this layer will usually cover the drainage pipe to uh, protect it so this is a, a clearer picture of how we are distributing uh, the media. So this is the drainage pipe, which is a perforated pipe. We cover it with a, a layer of coarse gravel, then finer gravel, then the sand. And at the top of this sand layer, we will have another gravel layer. Finally, the wetland must be sloped at the bottom between 0.5 to 1% to enable gravity flow through treatment system. As I have already said, it is very important that the wetland be adequately aligned to protect groundwater and also to maintain sufficient water for plant growth. We can use a liner material of PVC, polyethylene or polypropylene and also it is advised to protect this liner by a geotextile layer now let's see an example of a vertical wetland we are seeing here a top view of a vertical wetland after the primary treatment the water will be pumped into uh, this wetland as you can see we have the inlet pipes that are distributing equally the wastewater into the wetland and we have here the splashing plate that will inject oxygen into the wastewater and uniformly distribute 
this wastewater all around. Also, we have the drainage pipe at the base of the wetland that will collect the wastewater usually it is a perforated uh, pipe that will collect the wastewater for uh, disposal or further treatment we are seeing here a section view of a vertical flow wetland as you can see this is the inlet pipe that will distribute the wastewater we are seeing also the splash plate the different uh, media layers the sand layer the gravel layers also the liner that is covering the wetland the drainage pipe that consists of many perforations that will be later on collected through an unperforated outlet pipe now for the vegetation always uh, choose a type of reed that is adequate to the region you are working in so any native reed would work but it has to follow these criteria so we must have deep and and wide roots with strong rhizomes it must be able to grow in the wet nutrient rich environment and also it must have an efficient oxygen transport into root zone to facilitate oxidation of reduced toxic metals the most commonly used reeds are the phragmites carca and the phragmites australis because they are the most productive they can form horizontal rhizomes that penetrate the entire filter depth they have climatic tolerance and also rapid growth concerning the inlet distribution pipes they should always be designed to achieve an even distribution of the wastewater so this is as you can see an inlet pipe and uh, the splashing plates and the recommended diameter of this pipe is 100 millimeter now for the outlet pipe use a perforated pvc pipe of a diameter of 100 millimeters the holes can be of six millimeters as you can see here longitudinal perforation and always cover the drainage pipes with gravel as you can see in this picture for more information about wastewater treatment and constructed wetlands please click the following videos don't forget to like and subscribe.